Hey everyone, my name is Juliana and this is Juliana Talks Films, the channel where I go through the process of producing and examining films. If you're an indie film lover or filmmaker, consider subscribing for weekly videos. In today's episode, we're going to be focusing on Queen and Slum director Melina Matsukas. Melina is known for her bold, experimental, and often poetic filmmaking style, which at its core references a lot of socio-political issues and our shared human experiences. Her work is often characterized by sharp, strike colors and gritty textures. She got her start directing music videos for some of the most iconic pop artists in the last two decades, including Snoop Dogg, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Rihanna, and several of Beyonce's most recognized music videos. Melina has gone on to direct episodics for Insecure and Master of None, both of which snagged her nominations from various awards. Queen and Slim is Melina's first feature-length film, which was written and produced by fellow collaborator and friend Lena Waithe. Melina brings an original, strong, and unapologetic perspective to her films. It's no doubt she's part of the next wave of 21st century filmmakers leaving their mark on the history of cinema. So ladies and gents, here are Melina's top five lessons on filmmaking. Lesson one, find your voice. In an industry where people like me are so often the only one, where we have to fight daily to have a voice, the only other ones are the people I owe my career to. They taught me how to stop fighting, how to get into spaces, but rather how to create your own space, how to lead and how the culture will support you and they will recognize and honor black craft because our lives depend on it. My first true foray into directing was more than 10 years ago with my first sister, Beyonce. She truly influenced my career. She taught me how to work, how to dream and how to achieve. And most importantly, as an artist, how to take control of your own narrative. Without her, I'm not the same voice I'm not the same creator, and I'm definitely not the same filmmaker. My work in videos led me to another sister. I met Issa Rae when I was pitching on the pilot for Insecure. For once, I was not other. We created a new norm together. I realized how comfortable I had become being an outsider, and for the first time, we were the colonizers. <laughs> we ungentrified that space. <laughs> She taught me how to speak your own language with no interpreter, with no apology, and most importantly, how to make room for the next one. How to kick down the door and make sure it stays open. How to support new talent of color and create a platform where we can all thrive. We had lots of conversations about what we wanted to do in season two. You were very vocal about like how you wanted to approach the look and mm -hmm. just the tone, mm -hmm. just in general. Do you feel like you accomplished what you set out to do? You know, in the first season, I think we were all trying to figure out who we were and, and find our footing and figure out what that looks like and what our story looks like. And coming away from that, I knew, okay, we're our own story, like we're our own show. I think our biggest strength is authenticity mm -hmm. and that it feels real, you know? And I wanted cinematically it to kind of follow suit. And I think in this season, we finally, you know, achieved that. While I was at NYU, I actually interned and PA'd at production companies and decided that I wanted to start out in music videos. I always love music and I love that. You can be so experimental and have so much fun with a moving image. And you have a lot of creative freedom to just do really whatever you want. Whatever you want, as long as the artist likes it. Listen to Find Your Tribe. Um, I had a couple great teachers mm -hmm. in school. Uh, Melody Hobson is going to be my mentor, but she don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> She's your mentor in your head right now. Exactly. I'm like, I've been re-watching her TED Talk like right? over and over. She's phenomenal. I love it. I love her. Um... I don't know, maybe my friends, you know, I don't have any one person who's guided it. But in the same way that my mom is like my major decisions I share with my, my sister and mm -hmm. um, Melody is one of those. And, you know, we support each other. And I think that's really important to have a community that you feel supported by um, mm -hmm. that has your back and isn't judging you and also helping to guide you with their experiences, you know, because mm -hmm. I feel like we're all trying to figure it out. Like, nobody has the answer. There was no path set for us already, and everybody's path is different. Um, so I think we have to lean on each other's experiences mm -hmm. to kind of move forward together. How did you build your tribe? And I know it's always hard because you're kind of just living life, and then mm -hmm. you look up and you have this thing and this great community. Mm -hmm. But I also know we tell young people, we tell young women, like, find your tribe, have your tribe. And it's like, okay, well, how do you do that? 
That's a hard question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or how did you? Not how did you I don't tell know. I think else, mine was what? just natural, you know? Like, I gravitate towards certain people. I really don't like a lot of people, honestly. <laughs> so, but when I, when I like you, I love you. Mm-hmm. And I'm so loyal. And I trust you. And um, that's not going to be everybody, you mm-hmm. know? And I think there's different ways. It's like some people you just naturally gravitate towards and you have a connection on a personal level. Some people, while working with them, you realize you have a lot in common and you can lean on each other. Uh, and, you know, I think it, for me it just naturally happens, you know, like mm-hmm. when I have a connection with somebody and we form a bond, you know, and that mm-hmm. bond stays strong uh, through time, then that's how my your tribe, you know, I don't think it's something you can go set out and do. Like, right. Where are you going to go to the club? Like, hey, girl. <laughs> I'm looking for a tribe. <laughs> Want to be down with me? <laughs> well, I like your two-step. Right, well, right. That twerk is popping. You should be a part of my tribe. Exactly. No, I think, you know, on your way, like, you know, I think a lot of it was on my journey. Other people were there trudging along on theirs, you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, shit, we're, we're, we're doing this and we can do this together, yeah. you know? I saw this Issa Rae clip and I think at the event we were at Lena Waithe spoke to this a little bit Mm -hmm. but the idea that a lot of times folks are looking to build relationships with people who are maybe a level ahead of them or Mm -hmm. the people that they admire that are above but Mm -hmm. that actually the best relationships and the ones that will carry you the farthest are the people that are next to you I agree you know that's why I was saying like my mentors are sometimes just my friends you Mm -hmm. know Lena and Issa are both in my tribe Mm -hmm. you know and those are both women that a lot of our firsts happen together you know like Issa's first show was my first show directing on television. That's you know? amazing. But, yeah. you know, that was my first foray into into that world, too, you mm-hmm. know? And now we, we might do another project together. Mm-hmm. And that's how you, like, I think, create those bonds, you know? Mm-hmm. We have a lot of a similar background, and, and that connects you. And then because you're also at standing beside somebody, that I think it's easier to take that next step with that person. Right. Lesson three, learn from your mistakes. As I say, you've worked on a lot of huge videos. Have, do you feel like you've ever kind of messed up along the way? Have, have there been any like big mistakes that you've, you've learned from? I mean, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I come from a, you know, from a job without regretting something I did or wishing I had done something, you know, different. Um, but to me, that's what being an artist is about. It's about learning from your mistakes and trying to do better each time and you know I feel like my bit, biggest competitor is myself and trying to outdo myself each time and probably I hate most of the stuff I do. Yeah, seriously? <laughs> I'm my worst critic um, but I think you know it makes me better too. Yeah. Do you feel like you've had to prove yourself more? Definitely. I think you know as a woman and as, as a woman of color like I've definitely had to prove myself and you know but that's why I, I educated myself and I went to yeah. NYU and I got my graduate degree just And also as a director, I felt like it was important for me to know my options and to be able to communicate with the crew and everybody I work with in a, you know, place of knowledge and not, you know, but at the same time, I'm not scared to ask questions and it's a learning process every day, every time I learn something new. Yeah. Lesson four, be clear on your vision. I'm the same like you. I always base each story in the research. Like, so I just dive into like that time, the characters, the story, the colors, the art, the history of whatever, you know, story I'm trying to tell, the architecture. And then from there, like a painting kind of comes alive, right? And I have a vision um, for how to tell that story visually, you know? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. If you take the script away, this story is still told. I prepare myself in that way. And then I do shot lists and storyboards Mm -hmm. and like overly prepare and then get on set and it stays in my pocket usually. But I know I have that confidence if I need to go back into it that I can depend on. And then still trying to be open to seeing when you're on set because that is where the magic happens. Things that you would never expect happen. What kind of set do you run? I feel like, you know, for the performers and actors, it's hopefully comfortable and safe. Mm-hmm. You know, it feels like a place where we can create and we can continue to see. You know, we all go in with a plan, but I want to be able to, like, be spontaneous and build off each other when we're on set. So hopefully it feels like that. Um, and for my crew, you know, I feel like it's strong. You know, mm-hmm. it needs to be strong. We need to, like, be a unit and move as a, as one unit so that we can get our days done. And I'm probably loud and I'm sure people call me a bitch <laughs> and all that stuff all the time. But... I think that goes back to being a strong woman. It's Mm -hmm. like I have a specific vision, and I expect that everybody's going to show up to create that. And lesson five, experiment with the craft. 
So you start off as a filmmaker. You're obviously just making things, right? You're mm-hmm. making things, some good. Music some, videos. That's what you actually started with. Yes, I wanted videos. to only do music videos. Oh, so you beginning. were clear about that from the Very job. clear. My thesis in, in college and I went to grad school, they were both music videos. Um, the first one I did was for another friend of mine that I went to college with that I paid for out my pocket. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they gave us a camera and we snuck on trains and, you know, had my brother in it and shot in my cousin's apartment. <laughs> yeah. And then when I, I went to grad school and I did the same thing, I knew, you know, I was an MTV baby. I grew up watching music videos, taping them, winding them, watching them back and forth. Did you have the box? I know we're Of course. Now, yes. Okay. Yes. yes absolutely. <laughs> right. I think it might be still on. No. I feel like I saw it. Who, I don't know if it was old. Some like local video. access, you know, I don't know. Or maybe it was just like somebody had taped it and was playing it back. I love, you know, right. little vintage thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I grew up like that and I, I fell in love with this, um, the relationship between music and film. Mm-hmm. And I loved as a filmmaker how you could, you could really um, be experimental. You could try anything. You could do something performance-based, fashion-based, narrative-based. You know, I could tell stories or I could not, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I could make a beautiful editorial to music. Like, it could take so many different forms. And I loved um, I loved the quick turnaround and working with different people mm-hmm. and not having to f- kind of fit in one box of mm-hmm. who you are. And I thought as a filmmaker, it really helped me hone my skills, you know, so that when I was ready to do film or TV or whatever, the, or documentary, whatever the next step was, like, I felt like, okay, I've, I've had this experience and, and now I feel comfortable, like, moving on and mm-hmm. continuing to grow. My two personal favorite pieces of advice are find your tribe and be clear on your vision. What resonated with you guys? Leave a comment below and let me know. Per usual, it's been an absolute pleasure and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.